Black Friday and Cyber Monday are right around the corner in the U.S., which means it's time to start getting your plan together to take advantage of one of the biggest sales events of the year. Unfortunately, running temporary sales for subscription iOS apps on the App Store can be a little bit confusing. Unlike a paid up front app, you can't simply lower your price in App Store Connect and then just raise it again after the sale's over, because this will lower the price for all your existing customers as well. So let's walk through three of your options and how using RevenueCat can make it even easier. By far the easiest method to run a sale for a subscription app is to add or update an introductory offer for your existing subscription product. These are the tools you probably already use or should be using to do free trials or introductory discounts for your subscription. Introductory offers work by granting access to your product for a some period of time for free or for a discount. It's only available to new users who have never purchased your product before. After the period's over, they'll be auto-renewed at your regular subscription price going forward. Like I said, this is really commonly used for trials already. So here's how we can set that up in App Store Connect. Okay, so I'm in App Store Connect. Um, this is for a demo app that's not actually released, but the process will still be the same for an app in production. Um, so if I scroll down on the left here um, in monetization subscriptions, you'll see that I have a subscription group already set up called Pro. And inside of that, there's two products. There's an annual with a one week free trial and a monthly. The annual product is the one that I want to add our holiday sale uh, discount to with an introductory offer. So if I click into here, um, somewhat confusingly, the way to get to introductory offers is you scroll down on this page and you find this subscription prices section and click view all subscription pricing. And in this page, this is where you'll see the tabs with some different offers. So we're going to go into introductory offers. And you'll see I already have one here um, for the uh, free trial. So this makes it free for the first week for any new users. Um, what I can do is hit the plus button here and create a new introductory offer. And this is going to be the one for our sale. So uh, here you can pick which regions you want it to be available in. I'm going to make it available in all. And here you'll pick your start date. So you can make the start date today, but in my case, I don't want it to actually start until uh, the day before Black Friday. So I'm gonna choose the 28th, which is Thanksgiving day. And um, you'll see this message that lets you know that by starting a new introductory offer, it will end the old one. You can only have one introductory offer for a product at any given time. So I'm gonna let it start there. And I'm gonna choose no end date because I'm manually going to um, to switch it back. You could also create a new introductory offer that looks just like your normal free trial that starts on the date that you want your sale to end. Um, that would be the way to sort of automate all of this. Um, and hit next. And then here you can pick which type of introductory offer you want. You can make it completely free or you can make it paid. Um, paid as you go will like do a, a payment over time and pay up front as you pay the whole um, introductory offer price once, and then you have uh, access to these features for that period of time. So that's what I'm going to do is paid up front. And we're going to say um, the discount will be for a full year. And then I'll set the price. Um, let's say my app is normally $10 for a year. Let's make it $5 for the year. So what this will do is it'll create an introductory offer where you can pay $5 and access the app for a full year, as opposed to $10 for a full year. And then after this introductory offer uh, expires, then you'll those users will start being charged the $10 a year. That's what they'll be renewed at automatically. Um, and so I can hit next here. And then this is just like any other pricing in App Store Connect. You can change the price um, based on region. And now I can confirm all those details. And what you'll see is um, you have your current introductory offer, which is your normal free trial, and then your upcoming changes will show your sale introductory offer that's going to come in the future. Now, once this is set up, new users will have access to your new introductory offer in the app. If you set up your paywall correctly, or you use Revenue Cap Paywalls, which does this all for you, your users should see this updated information on your paywall UI. But it's not exactly clear that you're running a sale. 
I'd recommend creating a new one-off paywall for your sale that makes it clear to users that they have access to a limited time deal. If you're using RevenueCap paywalls, this is incredibly trivial. You can quickly whip up a new design through our dashboard. No code changes or waiting for app review. And you can even schedule it to start showing automatically by using RevenueCat's targeting feature. So you don't have to leave your Thanksgiving dinner party early to kick off your Black Friday sale. Now, there's a few things you should be aware of uh, using introductory offers for a short-term sale. For starters, users can only use one introductory offer for a subscription group for all time. This is intentional, so users can't keep redeeming the same trial across multiple products. That's why it's called an introductory offer, after all. But in our case, that means anybody who's redeemed a sale in the past for the same group won't be eligible. If you want to create offers for previous or even current subscribers, you'll want to use promotional offers, which are a bit more complicated. We won't dive into the details in this video, but you can get the details of that over on RevenueCat's guide to signing iOS subscription offers, which I'll link in the description below. Now, because of these eligibility restrictions, you want to make sure that your marketing copy reflects that only new subscribers will be eligible. Another limitation of introductory offers is that all eligible users will receive the same sale price, not just the ones you've acquired through other marketing channels. This might be exactly what you want, but if you only want users who've seen a specific marketing email or a social media post, you'll want to use something like custom offer codes, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And finally, it's important to note that introductory offers are introductory, meaning they're limited to only discounts or free trials for a period of time before users are then automatically renewed at the standard price. This is great if that's the behavior you want, but if you want to run a sale where users can lock in at a discounted price, introductory offers aren't really a valid option. So introductory offers. They're extremely easy to set up in App Store Connect. Customers will automatically renew at your normal price. And as we'll talk about a bit later, there's no confusing hidden products showing up in your App Store page or your iOS subscription settings. The limitations, however, are that it only works for new customers. The sale will show for anyone who's downloaded your app, not just users acquired through your own marketing channels. And it only supports temporary discounts. Users can't lock in to a discounted long-term rate. Another option for running a holiday sale is using custom offer codes. These are similar to one-time promo codes you may have used in the past, but with a few key differences. You can generate a single custom offer code to enable a subscription for free or a discounted price for a configurable duration, similar to the introductory offers. But this code can be distributed through external channels and used by multiple users, either by typing in a code in your app or by following a link through a URL or a QR code. And unlike introductory offers, they can also be configured to work for existing or previous customers, in addition to new customers. Let's look at how to set that up in App Store Connect. Okay, we're back in App Store Connect on the introductory offers page. Um, and now we're going to go look at this offer codes tab. And here is where you can set up a new offer code. So if you hit set up new offer code, um, you can give it a name. We'll call this, um, you know, temp sale or something like that. You can call it whatever you want. And then um, here you can set your customer eligibility. So this is one of the ways that this is different than introductory offers is that in addition to new subscribers, you can also enable this for existing subscribers or expired subscribers. Um, if you choose new subscribers, you'll have the option to um, allow those subscribers to also get the introductory offer or to make it exclusive to just one or the other. So they could, they could redeem this offer code, but once they do, they're ineligible for the introductory offer or vice versa. In this case, we'll just let them use both and then I'm also going to turn on eligibility for all subscribers and hit next. And then this flow is going to look really similar to the introductory offer. So you can choose all your regions. Um, you can set up how the payment itself works. So I'm going to choose pay up front, choose one year, and then set it to $4.99, just like the introductory offer. Um, so the way this will work is... Um, if they redeem this offer code, they can pay $5, they'll get a full year. After that year, they will auto renew at the normal price, which I'm saying is $10 a year. And hit next. Here you can set uh, different prices for each region, and then we'll get to the confirmation page itself. So let's confirm that. 
Okay, so now we have this uh, temp sale offer code. You'll notice this URL here. Um, you may think that this is the one you can use. We're not quite there yet. Um, you notice this ends with this code equals code query string parameter. We actually need to generate the codes uh, that will be used here. So we'll look at how this works here in a second. So down here, this is where you actually generate the uh, custom codes for uh, your sale. So this first one here is one-time use codes. So this is a like numbered code that you can literally redeem one time. So if I were to create this code and create a QR code from it or send it to somebody and they used it and then I gave that code to somebody else, they wouldn't be able to use it. Um, so if I go to create one of these, um, you know, you can decide how many you want to create, let's say 500 of them. Um, this is really good tool for like physical events. If you wanted to print out QR codes and hand them out and each QR code is unique. Um, so people can't reuse them. That's where you would want to use something like this. And you could pick an expiration date and then you can create those codes. This isn't as useful for a holiday sale. Um, so I wouldn't recommend using these here. The one we're interested in is custom codes. So a custom code is very similar, but the main difference is you actually choose a sort of memorable code and then it can be reused by lots of different people. Say like we're sending this out to, um, a podcast, you could use like a, a code that's memorable for that podcast. In our case, we're going to call this like uh, Black Friday uh, 24, right? And this would be like a code you could share on social media, um, or you can generate a URL like we'll show you here in a second. So once you have this code, you can say how many uh, you want, uh, how many people you want to be able to to use this. I don't think there's a way to make this unlimited yet, um, but you can set the maximum to 25,000. And then like the other one, you can pick an expiration date, which for a sale, super useful. So if we wanted this to start on Black Friday and end um, after like Cyber Monday, let's end it on the third and create. And so now we have this custom code uh, that we can send people in our marketing stuff. So we could send out just this code and they can redeem that in your app. But the easier way is uh, to go into your, um, your offer code here and take this URL that they gave you, take that URL and replace this code right here with Black Friday 24 with that code that you generated. And now this URL is the one that you can either send out um, or you could create a QR code uh, to share out to, uh, to your users. And that's how custom offer codes work. Custom offer codes make it easy for you to expose a sale to customers through your own marketing channels, like an email or social media post, but not expose every other new user, like those who come through App Store Search. They're also excellent for running influencer campaigns or even real life physical distribution using QR codes. Unlike introductory offers though, they aren't exposed in your app for everyone to see. So if you want everyone who downloads your app to see your sale, you probably want to use a different approach. And like introductory offers, custom offer codes are really just for temporary discounts. Users will still auto renew at your standard price and there's no option to let users lock in to a discounted rate long term. So, advantages to custom offer codes. They're really easy to set up in App Store Connect. Customers automatically renew at your standard price when the offer expires. They work for new, existing, and previous customers. You can limit them to only customers acquired through your external marketing channels. And they don't show up on your App Store page or in the iOS subscription settings. The main limitations here are that they must be redeemed through a code or link. They don't apply automatically to all customers who download your app. The redemption process can also be a little bit clunky, especially if you're trying to use the option where they can type the code in inside of your app. And they also only support temporary discounts, just like introductory offers. If you want your sale to allow users to lock in to a discounted rate long term, you'll need to set up an entirely new product. This will allow your customers to purchase a separate product from your normal offer and pay a separate price every time it renews. 
This is definitely more flexible than the other methods we've looked at, but it can get a little cumbersome because these new products will live forever and you'll have users subscribe to these products potentially forever. So you'll need to make sure you give access to the same features as users subscribe to your normal non-sale products. This is where using a tool like RevenueCat with its entitlements model makes things a lot easier. If you're curious, I'll link to a video that describes our entitlements model and offering model in the description below. But either way, you'll start by creating a new product in App Store Connect. Just like I showed you with introductory offers, you can use RevenueCat paywalls to build a themed paywall for your sale and then schedule it for later using targeting. If you want to limit your sale to only customers acquired through external marketing, like you can with custom promo codes, then you can leave your default offer using the non-sale product and then show your sale offer whenever a user enters your app through a deep link. Or you could set up your own promo code system where users can type it in and get your new paywall to pop up. You can see that this can get a lot more complicated than the other two options, but you do get way more flexibility. One thing to really think about, though, is that all of your products are going to show on your App Store page if users go and look at that section. And all products in a subscription group are visible to users already subscribed to another product in that group in their iOS subscription management page. So if you were to set up this new sale product in the same group as your non-sale products that already existed, then those old users will be able to see your sale product in their iOS subscription management pages. And they could actually manually switch to that sale product and start paying less. To get around this, you could put your sale product in a separate group. However, if you want users to be able to switch to a uh, different payment method, such as monthly or annual subscriptions, then you need to create those products in this new group as well. It can get a lot more complicated, but again, these are extremely flexible. So the biggest advantage to creating a whole new product is it's extremely flexible. Just like introductory offers, you could show this to every user that's downloaded your app. Or just like promo code offers, you can limit it to only users who you acquire through your own marketing channels by using deep links. And unlike both of those, you can support long-term discounts that users can be locked into. The possibilities here honestly are endless. You can reuse these products in other things like win-back campaigns or other types of sales. Um, there's a lot you can do here even outside of the scope of a holiday sale. Now, the biggest limitation here is it's just much more complicated, both to set up and also to maintain over time. These products will also show up on your App Store page. And if they're in the same group as non-sale products, they'll show up in the user's subscription management page and users can even switch to those sales. So there's a lot to consider uh, when it comes to this, but it is gonna give you the most flexibility. Ultimately, the best method for running a limited time holiday sale for your app is gonna depend on what you need. If you want to keep things simple, introductory offers and custom offer codes are great options. For the ultimate flexibility, with a little, or a lot, more work and maintenance, create a whole new product and build exactly the sale that you want. You can find a full written guide on running holiday sales over on our blog at the link in the description below. We try to keep it updated as Apple adds new capabilities over time. For everything else RevenueCat, go to RevenueCat.com.